Recent data surveying American college students found that narcissistic personality traits rose just as quickly as obesity rates from the 1980s to present day. Our next guest says that narcissism is at epidemic proportions, and he joins us now for more. Here's W. Keith Campbell, psychologist and co-author of The Narcissism Epidemic. And we welcome you up here from the state of Georgia to the province of Ontario. Good to meet you. Uh, good to meet you. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start with the story. Narcissus, who was he? Good looking guy, ancient Greece, um, is cursed to fall in love, uh, look for the perfect love. He wanders around, doesn't find anybody good enough to, for him, um, sees his reflection in a pond, falls in love with himself and dies, and there grows the Narcissus flower. That's the, that's the encapsulated version of the story, but it basically shows the, the downsides of falling in love with your own image or falling in love with yourself. 1999, you and Jean Twenge, who was on this program recently as well, your postdoc students at Case Western University in Cleveland, yep. and you're pursuing different streams of research, but somehow come together for this book. How'd that happen? Well, we were both in our basement office in Cleveland, and Jean has always been interested in sociology and studying change in personality over time. I had been studying narcissism, how people sort of inflate their own self-views, and we were talking about it. We thought, well, look at these changes. Let's see if we can look at narcissism over time. And then it got to the point where there's actually enough data to start to really measure the changes other than just guess at them, and that's where the research came from. Was your impression at the time that you had that coming together, boy, this feels like it's in epidemic proportions today. It feels that way. <sighs> Not to the extent I mean, not to the extent we felt later. Um, and, and even when, you know, when we did the book, it, 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 even, it even hit more after. It even felt like, God, we hit this nerve. This is, this is really a change. And, and some of the stuff, you see, it's even more now than it was when we started writing about it or doing the work. Well, let's get into it. 2007, you write the, the first pa yeah. paper on this. What did you find? We find that narcissism is going up. It's going up in college students. It's not just to pick on college students. It's just those are the people who have taken personality tests um, for the last 25 years. So we have those data. And we find that narcissism is increasing. Um, and, and it is about the same as weight. It's, this, it's about a third half of a standard deviation, which is an ugly measure to use on television, but in weight terms, like 12 pounds which in one sense doesn't sound like much, but if you take a whole culture and you shift trait like narcissism or weight up and you shift everybody up, the number of people on the extremes, the number of people who are very narcissistic goes up dramatically. And they're the ones who are, you know, blast themselves on the media. They're the ones who are ruining your life when you have hired them. They're the ones who make the awful bosses, the terrible boyfriends, the terrible girlfriends, whatever. So, so the problem really explodes when those, those people at the extreme go up. I would have thought that if obesity rates are going up, if you're more obese, surely you're less narcissistic. So I would have thought if, if people yeah, get more it, obese, they get less narcissistic. Yeah, it, well, it's fascinating because people have asked, it's like, well, gee, if everybody's all into being, having ripped abs, you know, which is kind of the, you know, you look in any American magazine, it can be, you know, toy airplane magazine and they'll have a section on how to have six pack abs. Um, you think, why isn't this working? And there's a couple of things that that seem, one is the obesity, I think, is, is largely pushed by sugar in, in the U.S., which is a whole other show, which I think would be very interesting. We're doing a whole week on okay, it. Okay, yeah. A whole well, week I on really it. think that's the big part of it, um, which is, in fact, shaped by people who want to be president and the fact that the first caucus is in Iowa. So there is some narcissism at that angle. Um, but also, we don't have meals as families anymore. I mean, that, the, everybody's become more individualized. I'll sit down with my family, five of us, mother-in-law, my two kids, my wife. We'll be eating at different places in the room, all eating different meals. We're not sitting down and making a single pot roast where everybody's doing, you know, some random thing. And then they're eating fast food a lot more and, and, and a lot more food on the run. But even that, um, it's interesting. We're out on a bit of a tangent here, but as long uh, as we're there, let's go for it. <laughs> That whole notion of people declining to eat dinner together yeah. as a sociological phenomenon, is that in part because whatever I need to do at that moment, me, 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 is more important than all of us coming together in a collective way to share an experience? Is that part of it? Yes, part of it, for sure. Um, it's, and it, again, this is part of this broader cultural change in individualism, and narcissism is really the dark side of that change. But yeah, everybody gets to pick their own food. Everybody gets to eat at their own time. Everybody who has the food prepared in their own way. We talk past each other. We'll talk and be on the internet at the same time. It's my family. And I know what I'm, I know I'm screwing it up and I still do it. So 
you know, it's, it's the change. Okay, you bring the study out in 2007. Mm -hmm. What's the immediate reaction? Well, it, it, it was fascinating. It got out there and it, it you know, one of, one of the co-authors wrote, you know, we're bigger than Jesus. You know, obviously, when I'm serious, making that sort of reference, that old Beatles comment, <laughs> because I think at the same time they'd found, you know, James, you know, Jesus' brother supposed uh, urn, and that was the second biggest story in, on Yahoo News. But it, it came out all over the place, and half some people were very upset by it. Some people were upset, upset at us and saying, why are you wasting money studying things like this that are so obvious? Um, it, it really... Uh, well, you hit a nerve. I hit a nerve. Yeah, I should say I, we hit a nerve, yeah. But, you, but presumably, if that nerve is there to be hit, it's because you've, uh, you've stumbled on something that people are uncomfortable on. about. Yeah, I, I'm an academic. I mean, we sit around, we talk about ideas, and then they get in the world, and sometimes people care, and sometimes they don't. And this is one of those cases where people cared. Hmm. Yeah. You just gave us the example of your family and the, mm -hmm. uh, how everybody individually goes off into their own corners yeah. to do their own things. Uh, away from the data in your own personal experiences, how did, how did you and how do you see narcissism on the rise? Well, you can see it all sorts of place, places. So you, I mean, with talking about kids, you, you go and look at uh, kids' T-shirts. And they'll say things like, too good to eat my vegetables, or diva, or little princess. I mean, they're all sort of these dramatic, self-important traits. I mean, these are considered cute. Um, you see it uh, at my kids' schools with the awards and the, you know, all about me exercises that are, I mean, my daughter, and this is part of the self-esteem movement in education, but they, you know, my daughter came home one day and said, I've got to tell everybody my special talent. <laughs> like, and I always think special talent, I always think juggling bamboo, you know, spinning plates with bamboo at the Beijing Circus. Now Just that would be cool, right? If you talent. did that, people go, that's a special. She doesn't have a special talent. I don't have a special talent, you know? But that's, what, that's what's been pushed on them. You see it with the trophies. You see it all over the place. Trophies not for winning, but trophies for showing up. Yes, yeah. You're not for that. No, I think it's ridiculous. Um, I, I had one with my daughter. She was, I mean, she was literally on the soccer field dancing with her shadow, looking at her shadow and dancing. Great, fine. She's five. But you don't get a trophy for that. <laughs> I'm all for team pictures. I'm all for going out for pizza afterwards. You know, I'm not an angry guy. I just the trophy seems a little bit. Okay, what's misplaced. the difference then between this being a problem and this, as the title of your book suggested, an epidemic? I think it's the extremity of it and the fact that you see these really negative consequences. So, in the extremity is is I mean they had a study by. Uh, some, a group at National Institute of Health that found with young people the rates of narcissistic personality disorder, sort of the extreme form, um, was about 1 in 11. I think those numbers are high. Even I think those numbers are high. But that's compared to about 1 in 30 of people in their 60s. So you have the very high rates of at least the traits of narcissism. And they have these negative effects, often not for you as somebody who's narcissistic, but on your, on your spouse, on, your, on the people you work for, on the people you interact with, on sort of the general civility of society. So in that sense, I think it's, it's bigger than you'd expect and it's negative. But presumably this phenomenon happened in response to something else, which was kids of a generation ago or two generations ago were growing up with not enough self-esteem. Isn't that possible? Um, it's possible. But you're not buying. I'm I haven't not convinced really, you. I'm not, you haven't convinced me. I mean, there are people with low self-esteem. There are people who are depressed. Hey, I watch Oprah, man. They're yeah. on Oprah all the time. <laughs> They're out there. <laughs> there is no epidemic. She's all about the self-esteem. There is never an epidemic of low self-esteem. I mean, self-esteem is so high in the U.S. that if I give a bunch of college students a standard self-esteem measure, the, the most common response will be perfect self-esteem. Like, my self-esteem is 100%. It's the most common response. There is low self-esteem. It happens with a small group of people. It's related to depression. Low self-esteem isn't a good thing. It's just not very common. But the narcissism epidemic, I mean, an epidemic is a word that you usually use for some kind of disease like the bubonic plague that's going to come and wipe us out. You really want to use that same word here? Yeah. I mean, we thought about it a lot. And, and the idea is that things are getting bad, and what I thought would happen was that it would continue to get worse and at some point there would be a correction from this. I mean, you get a society that's so 
that people become more full of themselves and more self-absorbed and there's more of a breakdown in trust that the system starts to go out of whack. We've seen that, a lot of it driven by debt, which I think is part of the issue here. Um, we're getting, this, this gets <laughs> broader. Um, Just want to explain that for a second? How, yeah. how, how is debt a feature of all well, this? I, I, when we looked at you know what what dri what's driving this and some of the, the obvious things not obvious but the things you think about is the change in self esteem and parenting the change in education and the, the um, you know the internet and uh, social media but another thing is debt I always think of debt as your fairy godmother you know hey you can get anything you want go go buy this new BMW go buy this new McMansion or one of these condos you have down up the street here and, and look good and it's great and you feel really good and then you have a huge amount of debt and they take it away from you. And so when you have a massive debt wave in an economy, people can expand how they live their lives and look better than everybody else. And what's interesting is when one group of people starts looking good, it makes everybody else feel bad or a lot of other people feel bad, like why don't I have a McMansion? Or why don't I, I shouldn't use that, I don't know if you use that term in Canada, yeah, McMansion. Sure. Yeah, why don't I have a McMansion? I need one too and it drives everybody that direction. But the system should collapse if, if that's, what's driving if it's not based on actual substance. Can you make a distinction between narcissism and just very high healthy self-esteem? Yes, um, often people say super high self-esteem is narcissism. It's a, different, if it's a different animal. Probably the biggest difference is that people who are narcissistic say I'm better than you, I'm better looking than you, I'm smarter than you, I'm more creative than you. They don't say I'm nicer than you. They don't say I'm the kindest person in the world. They say I'm just, the best. Um, Self-esteem has a little bit of that. You feel I'm smart, I'm confident, I'm good looking, but I'm also a decent person, I'm a moral person. And so it's a much more rounded, well-rounded view of yourself and it's not so much about being better than other people, it's about being good. So self-esteem is generally not a bad thing. Um, there's some downsides, but generally I, I want my kids to have high self-esteem. Narcissism is generally more negative. That's self-esteem on steroids maybe? Too much? I don't think, I think it's, it's warped. It's sort of a warped version of self-esteem. So steroids might <clears throat> be the right metaphor. I think uh, our audience probably knows the answer to this, but you never know. Men or women, who suffer from narcissism more? It, um, men, except on reality television where the women seem to have higher, <laughs> self have higher narcissism. Yeah, it's yeah. generally a little more in men. Um, How about younger people versus older people? Younger. And how does that reflect itself in the data? What do you find that shows that? Well, if, you, if I take a sample of, you know, give a narcissism test or I, to 100 people, I'll find that the, the men are of higher scores than women. It's not much higher, but a point or two. Um, if I look at the, the psychiatric data, men are diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder more than women to, to a much higher extent. Um, and if I take a, a sample of, you know, go sample a bunch of people and look at the age, the older people will have much higher narcissism than the younger, or and the older people have much lower narcissism than the younger people. Should be the other way around, because younger people haven't done anything yet. Older people that, actually have something to be narcissistic about. Well, there's two, there's two things going on there. One is, you know, when you look at the age range, is a cultural change, that young people were really raised in a different culture than older people, and that's part of, um, part of why they have higher scores. And part of it is it's probably something developmental. It, people who are younger are, have this fantasy or belief that they can do anything and be anything, and that gets beaten out of you as you get older, and pretty soon you're kind of just happy to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, besides, you've talked about some sort of clinical data points here that indicate yeah. somebody fills out a questionnaire, you can pick a narcissist out based on that. Can you, can you determine whether somebody's a narcissist after having, let's say, spoken with them for a half an hour? Yes, you, you can. can. You can tell from a Facebook page. You can tell from an e email address. Oh, you so can, you don't even need to. You can tell from a 30-second clip of behavior. Not perfectly, but I mean, Good on indication. average, you can, you can have some indication, yes. Okay, can we play around a little bit with this here? Before, yes, as long as you don't have me rate no, no, no. famous people Before, as lawyers. No, 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 I okay. won't do that. No, I'm, I'm actually gonna ask you to rate a completely not famous person at all. Okay. okay? While you were in the green room, before you came out on this set, you were chatted up by our producer, Eric Bombaccino, mm -hmm. for probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that? Yeah. Okay. Him? I don't think so. Oh, come on. Yes, he is. He's young. <laughs> he totally is. 
In fact, everybody who works with them here, we all think it. Uh -huh. But we want you to be the academic I, imprimatur that will confirm it for I us. I can measure it. I could measure it clinically for you. I can, <laughs> I, I can do that, but I'm not. I don't want to give it. He's a very nice young, nah, nah, young I think man. I think, I think you're sucking up to him because he booked you for the show. I am. You're right. I want to come back. <laughs> I want to come back when it's. Well, sunny. you're coming back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's um, it, it is something you can see. You can tell. I mean, in studies, people are narcissistic or more well groomed. They've got fancier clothes, they have more adornment, um, they look more attractive, mm. but if you shave them and get rid of all the adornment, they're not any more attractive. They're more self-promoting on Facebook, they have more friends on Facebook, they have email addresses that are more uh, salacious and sort of self from you know, like... I'm magnificent at gmail.com. Super, yeah, super hot bunny face <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> Yeah, so all those things are correlated with narcissism. Well, now that you mention that, when I think of Eric, he dresses lousy, he doesn't groom well. He's got an inflated opinion of himself, but Which that's is, a different story. I don't story. know his personal email. <laughs> it's nothing exciting. Are narcissists capable of having real, meaningful relationships? You know, it's, it's a struggle because they're very good at starting relationships, but they have real issues with empathy, and often the needs of the self get in the... Re in, in, in the way of the relationship and sabotage them and screw them up. Hmm. So it, it's, it's possible but not probable, if that makes sense. I mean, I wouldn't say it's impossible, I just say it's, it doesn't work out that way very often. Because a, a narcissistic person cannot empathize with somebody else? Is that the difficulty? It's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge empathizing. And also, when it comes down to me or, me or my partner, um, you pick me. <laughs> so, so the classic um, relationship. I was talking about this with people, it's sort of a chocolate cake model, because I don't know why food makes sense, it's simple. Um, you meet somebody who's really attractive and exciting, and you get in a relationship and it's really fun, and you feel really good about yourself because you're with this cool person. And then usually what happens in relationships is they go from being sort of exciting um, and passionate to more emotionally intimate or close. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to happen with narcissistic relationships. They can't do that part of it. That's not really their, their bag of tricks, right? Mm -hmm. So they instead become maybe controlling, and they, be, and they seem materialistic, and they're game playing, and the person in the relationship doesn't know what's going on, and then um, eventually the narcissist hitting on the person's sister, and you go, this is a disaster, <laughs> and the thing falls apart. So, so that's sort of the pattern, that, that empathy piece isn't, isn't there. Do, uh, does your research ever indicate whether narcissists recognize themselves as being that? They, they do to some extent. Um, and you'd say, well, then that should cure it, right? Because you go, look, I'm kind of full of myself. But the thing is, A, you feel pretty good when you're full of yourself. Or B, and B, people say, you know, I'm sort of full of myself, but everybody is. Or, but it works for me, and you should be. So it's, it's a morally the right way to be. So even though there is some awareness of narcissism, it doesn't seem to solve the problem, it's, if that's an issue. Yeah, um, and I guess everybody else enables it, or lots of other people enable well, it. Well, you find people who enable it. Yeah, you get a posse, you get the, you know, you get the arm candy, you get, the, you get a bunch of people who look up to you, and you, you create the social world that, that allows your narcissism to work. And that's the hard part. If you think you're better than you are, you have to create an atmosphere that always makes you feel that way. And when you use people, you end up losing them, and you have to find more people that suck up to you. It would seem inevitable that if you are a president, prime minister, governor, senator, provincial premier, I mean, these people are surrounded all day long by people who are yeah. saying, yes, sir, no, ma'am. Yes. So is it a given that virtually everybody who's in a position of authority sort of, in politics is a narcissist? It, it seems like I, a job requirement might job requirement might be too strong of a word. But if you look at presidents, um, first of all, if you want to be a president, that's kind of a uh, if symptom. You, if you think you're good enough to rule the world, yeah, that I should, should be a sign? Yeah, straight off the narcissism <laughs> inventory. Um, and so that's part of it. Um, and also, narcissism really predicts emerging leadership. So if I take a bunch of strangers in a room and say, pick a leader, the person who's narcissistic will be picked as leader. They tend to be charismatic, they tend to be outgoing, they seem confident, and they want to be the leader. So narcissism predicts becoming a leader. What it doesn't predict is being a good leader. 
It predicts being a leader who takes risks. It, it predicts, and sometimes that's great, and you're a legend, and sometimes that's bad. It also predicts a leader who has poor ethics. In presidency, it predicts being impeached, for example. Well, I was just going to say, you're talking Bill Clinton here, aren't you? Well, yes. I mean, he, he has a lot of those symptoms. And again, I, I wouldn't look back and say Clinton was a horrible president. He did some, did some great things. I don't think people think he's a terrible president, but he shot himself in the foot. He, you know, all that political capital he had, he just shot himself in the foot over relationships. I mean, it's ridiculous. Unless you think you're entitled and you, you can get away with it and you're smarter than your own good. At, at the risk of putting this into some kind of historical perspective, he's not the first president who had an affair in the Oval Office. In fact, a lot of them did. So he may have just been following in the, in the path of many narcissists who've had the job before him. I, I think so, but we do. Well, we know so. Well, I mean, we know so about the affairs. You're mm -hmm. correct about that. But if you look at the narcissism, I mean, this is basically if you take, I mean, we have a new study coming out on this, but if you look at, if you take bio biographers and you say, give me the personality of presidents you've studied, and you look at the narcissism of presidents, it's going up. I mean, it's higher now. The average president now is more narcissistic than the average president was at the, you know, when the country was founded. Really? You think Obama's more narcissistic now than somebody of 100 years ago? Yeah. Than Teddy the, Roosevelt? No, he's actually one of the, he's one of the very hard charging, I mean, I don't think Obama, I mean, but you've got, and also Andrew, Andrew Jackson, when, yeah. you know, historically was very narcissistic. But other than that, the trend seems to be going up. And part of it is the job. I mean, being a, being a president now is being a celebrity. And, and the other group of people you find very high narcissism scores are reality television stars. <laughs> it's the same job. Let's, uh, let's read this quote here from Ray Williams from Psychology Today. This is from a year, a year ago or so, in which he says, repeated public opinion polls have voiced the concern of Americans over the erosion of civility in government, business, media, and social media. The most recent poll by Weber Shandwick reported that 65% of Americans say the lack of civility is a major problem. What's even more distressing is that nearly 50% of those surveyed say they were withdrawing from the basic tenets of democracy government and politics because of incivility and bullying. Do you see the connection between narcissism and incivility? I, I do in terms of just that a big part of it I think is trust. It's just that social trust. There's, there's just a huge lack of trust in our country. And, and we saw it, you know, you'll see, if you go back to history, you saw the big drop after Watergate, but it's, it's lower now. Um, and so I think, uh, I think that is part of it. In terms of the I mean, in terms of politics, part of it is the, you know, you want to put yourself in front of the common good in the country. So you go, well, I'll just grandstand on this silly issue, get a bunch of news, get reelected, and I'll go on and I'll get my pension after six years. And so people, there, that is part of it. The other part is, you know, gerrymandering, a lot of other things we've done mm -hmm. in terms of our country and the way media has changed. And anyway, it's a much broader discussion. Um, that I think doesn't so much reflect the ego of people in office, but the people watching the way media is set up. People watch media that they want to, and everything's become channelized. And but uh, my hunch is people put up with Bill Clinton's shenanigans and voted for him more than they voted for the people who ran against him because they did get the sense that, okay, he may be a narcissist, but he's in the Oval Office every day working for me. Right? That's, yeah, that's and, fair and to it say, isn't smart, it? and he seemed kind of wonkish and yeah but I mean, for a narcissist he actually seemed to put the public interest at the center of what he did yes and and there's this except when it except on those rare occasions except. when, when yes. it had to, he could have just been honest and didn't you know I mean so that was his problem but the, but what's really interesting is you can find that people care about the common good or can care about a much bigger sort of altruistic good and still be personally selfish and narcissistic. I mean, you, you find people who are almost psychopathic. I mean, the James Bond character, who's sort of this very dark, almost psychopathic character, who's also doing it for queen and country. So you can have that juxtaposition at times. Uh, just in our last minute here, what are the social costs of narcissism? Well, there, there's <laughs> one minute worth. Um, <laughs> you find... Uh, Corporate leaders who who take big risks and destroy companies and shareholders, you find, uh, and commit white collar crime. You find uh, spouses who are unfaithful and 
uh, destroy marriages, you find parents who, who use their kids as props to make themselves look good and end up hurting the kid in the long run. You find, should keep going? Yeah, that's a pretty good list. That's a, no, yeah, that's a I pretty mean, good list. You find all these, these I mean, con narcissism is like a flu that everybody around you gets sick and you feel great about yourself. Now that's really summing it up nicely. Yeah. All right. That's today. Tomorrow we're going to come back and chat again, and you're going to tell us what we can do to put an end to this epidemic, okay? Sounds good. His name is William Keith Campbell, W. Keith Campbell on the front of the book, and it's called The Narcissism Epidemic. And we thank you for coming today, but we've only just begun. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.